Hey, Brian here. Hey, this is Eldgram. And as promised, we're here with the uh, Frankish Axe, the Francesca, or uh, Frankish Tribal Axe that many historians have been up in the air about, whether it was used for throwing, uh, just for combat. Uh, it's surely documented as being thrown. Uh, it's even mentioned that the Vikings threw Francesca. We don't find a lot in Scandinavia, but we found them all over Europe. It wasn't just a uh, axe that was known during Charlemagne's time. I mean, uh, it was. A, I mean, it was certainly something that they carried because they were Franks and they were proud to be Franks. But I mean, even the Vikings uh, and uh, other European uh, warriors liked this axe. Swore by them. Yeah, and after our testing, where I noticed that the way the head shaped, uh, that it follows the angle of attack, and it's got it usually has a smaller head. They're not as broad. Kind of makes sense. It would probably punch through uh, armor much more effectively following the uh, ergonomic uh, angle of the arm and all the force going behind that head. There you go. For a normal axe, I don't like his. Here we've got the Nordic axe, which we'll be throwing and testing out today as well. Uh, normally hits a lot of times here, but the blade kind of slices as it rides up from that, that angle. That's why the beers, a lot of times when they come into play, they're rounded, they hit first, and then it kind of slices it in yeah. as it cuts. So you got two different ideas there on concepts. I wonder how many centuries it took for them to come up with this? I'm not sure. But uh, but some of the theories are, which Lenny Bay just brought this up, which we're going to try this today. We have a curved handle, which I can put on two different ways. I told Bo can handle, I made it a little handle. But you can do that, you can swap them out. Uh, we're going to test it out, see what kind of bounce it has, if it throws differently, if it affects the throwing. We're going to do some throwing and have some fun. Yeah, definitely, man. Uh, you're going to try yours point up as well. Right? Yeah, so we're going to show you that, that this is a really functional axe in, the, in that you can knock the head off and, and reposition it the way you feel comfortable with it. And honestly, on that on that head cleaving video we did uh, recently, I felt I felt that way using this. Is I wish I did have it point up with the beard. Well, one way is known as beaked or horned in the Vikings. Uh, and sometimes that was on both sides, and sometimes it was just coming up as a protrusion. Which is that we don't find a lot of axes that way. That's why my theory is, what if some types of beards were put up for different functions? There you go. Because we don't always find the handle intact. Wood rots. All right. we find is the iron head. So as to how the man mounted it. Uh, we're not 100% sure. We don't right. even know what kind of wedges they used a lot of times. We don't know if it was done this way where the axe head comes up from the bottom, which is certainly yeah. uh, a good way to keep it on due to centrifugal force. Oh, and, and if it was thrown, my theory on it, uh, is if it did come loose because it hit tremendously hard, I couldn't throw it back. It would be sure. like a peel on the Roman peel and bending. There you, you know? go. So, yeah, sorry not, not, to, not to overdo it here, but let's get going. Yeah, I'm ready to have some fun. Let's do Yo. this. All right, guys, I'm going to go ahead and try it with the handle it comes with. It's a straight handle, uh, and it's made like a lot of modern throwing axes or tomahawks where it comes up from the bottom, which, like I said, the centrifugal force helps hold it on. It can still be wedged on extremely tight, uh, and it might be it advantageous for throwing, especially if you're going to use it specifically for throwing. Uh, for combat with a shield, we might want a slightly longer handle, but it's up to you. It's all preference. For throwing, it's perfect. You have about two and a half to three lengths of the blade. That's usually what you go. Let's go ahead and try this out. Nice! And I was aiming for like a face, because that's what I normally am used to doing in reenactment when I'm throwing at the Yolmers and the SCA with my flying pork chops and stuff with your foam axes. Man, I hit dead on. And it stuck exceptionally well. Oh. Not bad at all for just straight out throwing trying to hit a target. I, I think it works well with the straight hand. All right, so here I am. I've got the um, I've got the medieval shop Nordic axe as it was manufactured. The beard pointing down on this uh, standard handle. So let's see what it can throw like. Nice. Talk about a view. Same spot I hit. I'm assuming you were looking at that same face. <laughs> yeah, pretty much. Nice. But I like it. I think it's a very cool axe. But I still think it would stick a lot better if I put the beard up. Oh, Why don't we it. change a few things out and see what happens next? Wow. All right, so here we are. We got the uh, beard or beak facing up. You know, this makes a good thruster or stabbing point. So that's kind of cool. But I think it's going to help a lot with my throwing. So let's check it out and see what, it sh see what it'll do. Oh, yeah! The beard pointing up really makes a difference, dude. And it's stuck in there excellently. Oh, and uh, about the same target. Yeah, but you know what I like is that it 
it flew in. Like, I mean, Most it certainly. stabbed in. I thought that was great. It's a lot like... A lot more damage, but a lot of times the point first does hit that way when you're throwing. Nice, man. That's cool. Just... Nice. Beautiful. You got him on both sides, one and then the other. Yeah, I found the right secret the with this axe. I like to hold it a little more at the center instead of a little further down. I might explain it. Very possible. All right, I'm back here and uh, I have a curved hound. The Boken had a proper shape. We had an old broken one. And yes, we use uh, Japanese swords for uh, Japanese stuff. So um, we have our, uh, our Bujinkan train. But uh, having to have it worked perfect. It's fit right on here and it gives me a nice curvature. Maybe not as much as some would like, but that certainly brings out the head more like if you were fighting, if you wanted a different angle, which I had no problems with it anyhow. But uh, I'm gonna throw with it and we're gonna see how it throws with a curvature on the handle because you can put your own handle on if you like. This is a hair longer. Whoa! Not too bad. Nice. I a little bit lower on purpose to see what it did. That's totally good. I love it, man. It does throw well like that. I like it. Very cool. Oh! Straight center. Not bad at I all. I love it. The house seems to not make a lot of difference, but one of the things I think it does make uh, is anytime you curve something like this, it makes it a little easier for it to get out of the way as the head's coming in due to the curvature of the head. Yep. Because, I mean, you've curved it, so you have to have, if you have the exact same length, you're going to have a little less, not by much, but just by a hair yeah. when you throw it. It feels good that way. Certainly. Cool. Okay, now with this curvature, what I've done is I've rounded this, because, of course, I couldn't do an S shape like Lindy Bage spoke of in their testing when their axes bounced, and they bounced all over the place. But we still have a curvature. We have the rounding here, which kind of acts like an S curve, the way it should hit the ground. This is sticking up a little high. I don't know if that'll make a difference. Normally, it's right, right here. As how most people assume along the uh, curvature of the blade. Well, we're going to go ahead and see if we can get a bounce here. Oh, oh man, that you was You could so definitely close. see it, though it didn't stick. The disarray, you would get it and hit the ground and it bounced up. Uh, do we think they aimed at the feet in front of them? No, but... Yeah. If it happened and it extended its reach past where it was aimed at or fell short, because they were thrown in the heat of battle while they were rushing in to... Uh, shock the shield wall normally when they threw hand axes or small axes i can definitely see that being a worrisome thing especially with the lenticular shields and stuff hitting them and glancing the way they were designed to glance off where you normally push it out of the way it would glance right up and come down on men so. all right what i've done is i've changed the handle because this very well could be an s curve this way if you see what i'm saying i know that looks ridiculous but some people think that they might have mounted them that way i've heard that suggestion for that specific reason of the boomerang style flipping. Now, whether they purposely tried to exploit that or just threw it at the shields, we're not sure, but it certainly has a bounce. Anyhow, well, let's see what this does. Oh! oh! Ha! That's that an improvement. somebody's face off. That definitely went over a shield, that's for sure. Yeah, Into the back good. ranks. These are not going to be control special techniques, I doubt. Uh, they're going to be something that just occurs when you miss and fall short and it hits the that ground. That definitely or, made a difference. Or hits someone's shield. Oh, oh! Another headshot that would be unexpected. Oh, I just wish it would... Oh, man, it'd be so cool if we had something just a little higher for it to stick in. That would have stuck. I saw the blade go first. I know, as I'm saying, like, that that would have stuck. I don't think the trick shots were done this way. I think it was just accidental, but it would I really, yeah, because unnerving. you're throwing... If you're in the back row to have something come over ahead yeah it's not just one something it's hundreds thousands of them oh, at yeah. once i think it would break the formation even if you didn't stick them in the lenticular shields that a lot of times things would glance off off of due to the curvature yep. of the heavy uh, oxide oh almost oh that definitely would have hurt all right you'll have to figure it out Oh, oh, 
Almost. Oh! Oh! Nice! Oh, that was nasty. I was trying that left shot of yours. ka -ching! I like it. That's cool. should be right on the hill. Oh, that was the target. That had nothing to do with you. You split. I know. You split it right in the middle. That's awesome. Woo! Well, I hope you enjoyed our video today and our testing, especially with the curvature, the S curvature, the best we could do on it, two different angles. And it's appeared for the bounce. This worked the best. And uh, as a partial reply to Lindy Beige, just to say it, uh, you are correct, me, Lord, that it would function exactly in that manner. Yeah. And of course, we also tried out the uh, Nordic Axe with the beard pointed upward, have the beak pointing up. Well, certainly, and, I did uh, a video a while back on that where people co get complained when I had set it up for throwing competitions that way. Uh, I really feel like this is the most functional way to use it and I'd love to test it in some other applications later besides throwing. Oh well we were going to come back and we haven't done it yet with our Viking axe and shield video and we will be showing where you have uh, beaks or horns going both ways or just going up and techniques for that because there are techniques where that comes in and there's not a lot but there's some where it's very effective. Right on. Well we hope you enjoyed our throwing video today. Uh, stick around for some more. And uh, don't forget, guys, subscribe to our channel. That's Thane Thran, spelled the old way, T-H-E-G-N, Thane. And uh, you can also find us on Facebook at Thrandon Elgram's Well of Remembrance. And uh, you can always ask to join our private group, our closed group on Facebook. That is the Thane Thran YouTube Boat Crew, where you get exclusive content. You get to have conversations kind of with Thrand and I. Uh, we're on the up and up with you guys. We'll tell you, you know, how to build your shield or how to improve upon something you're trying to do. If uh, we know. If, if we, we know. know. If we don't, yeah. we'll Some direct you to someone. Us, we don't know, but we will research the information or we'll, like he said, yes. direct you to, uh, to someone some we expert know that, that knows. might know more about That's it. right. That's right. And, of course, there's always uh, your help in improving our content. As you can see, we have our nice canopy here. It's really helped kind of diffuse the sunlight, make it a lot easier to shoot any time of day in any kind of weather. So uh, we appreciate your donations. Anytime you can help us out, uh, we put your money to good use here. And uh, you can do that at www.patreon.com slash Thrand. And Thrand's also got his PayPal. That's through Thane Thrand at uh, yahoo.com. So let him know if you're going to use PayPal instead of Patreon. Either way is good with us. Uh, once again, thanks for watching and farewell. Bye, man.